welcome back. Let's uh, now go to Blaine Herman. Uh, we had to cut out of his interview a bit earlier as soon as the announcement was made. So the 2022 Commonwealth Games expected to deliver up to, I'd say, 20 billion rand in output to the economy, translating into an additional 11 billion rand in GDP growth. So to find out more, let's cross over to our SABC News colleague, Blaine Herman, who is at the George Campbell School in Durban, where the official announcement event is being held. Blaine, a very, very good morning to you. Yeah, Liam, thank you very much indeed. Live from the George Campbell, just to add to that, uh, around 12 billion in terms of direct expenditure is expected. So indeed a great coup uh, for, for the city of Durban. Wild excitement seemed to be the order of the morning here. Great reaction from the crowds that gathered here at George Campbell School. And, uh, you know, Durban is now officially the host of the 2022 Commonwealth Games, and they recognize that they're happy. Now, we are a stone throw away from the iconic Moses Mabira Stadium. Now, that's where the games will be centered around the sporting precinct. And we're told, in fact, about 80% of the facilities are actually within a 2.5 kilometer radius. That's great news because considering we're expecting about, what, 200,000 people uh, to come to Durban. We're talking about the athletes, we're talking about delegates, we're talking about supporters. Let's find out more. Let's further this conversation. Jay Snydo is a representative of Saskok. He joins me now live. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Snydo, for your time. Firstly, your reaction to the announcement. I think we're very excited. I think it's great, not just for the city of Durban, but for athletes in this country. For the yeah. first time, you know, a number of the smaller codes will be participating in a major international event here in South Africa. And uh, the local fans will be able to see them. So we're very excited. Yeah. And I think uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, seven years as we build up to 2022. It's great for our athletes as well, because normally, you know, I heard Sean Pollock earlier on talking about it. Our athletes often travel abroad for games like this. Now they're in home soil. Great, great for the athletes. Yes. You know, if you look at most countries, uh, you know, when, when they're hosting events uh, on, on their ground, uh, the athletes perform much better because of the crowd support, the spectator support. And I think it's just uh, the excitement amongst athletes themselves in terms of being uh, racing uh, with, with home support. I think uh, it's going to be a wonderful event. Yeah. Yeah. We've got, what, seven years to go? Uh, but seven years is not a long time. I remember when the, the uh, 2010 announcement was made. I mean, that just crept up on us, didn't it? What needs to be done now in terms of nurturing talent going forward for the Games? Yeah, I think that's going to be a critical part. If you look at every single country that hosts a major international event, they put substantial amounts of resources in developing the athletes to win medals at the Games. If you look at what Scotland did at the last uh, Commonwealth Games, they came virtually from nowhere to become one of the top medal-winning countries at the, at the Games. And we're going to have to do that. So seven years in most sporting codes is, is about the minimum amount of time you need to prepare athletes. And we're going to have to start like yesterday, uh, identifying that squad of athletes, and I'm sure most codes already have that, but investing in both in terms of their preparation and training and competition, but also in the facilities they're going to require to be able to be competitive on that world stage to win medals. Yeah, talk about medals, there's about, what, 222 uh, medal events, uh, a 14-day program, really packed program. It, it's a really uh, packed program. You know, I mean, we, we have a number of sporting codes, and in the past, we have won medals uh, at the Commonwealth Games. And I think uh, for us, it's not about finishing fourth or fifth on the medal table, it's finishing uh, right on the top. Yeah. And I think that's the challenge we have. And, you know, in, in South Africa, we have the talent. I, I don't think there's any issue about the talent. It's about making sure we're investing and nurturing the talent to be really competitive to win medals uh, come 2022. You talk about talent. We have a lot of talent in the pool. You swing as South Africa president. Uh, in terms of that, uh, how is that going? How's our preparation in terms of our swimmers? It's going really well. You know, I mean, we came back from uh, World Championships with five medals. Uh, but, uh, you know, a number of the athletes by, 20, by the time 2022 comes uh, would have stopped swimming. So creating that next tier of, of uh, athletes is critical. And we're already starting to work on that. You know, we've got a team going to Samoa uh, this week. And, and uh, that will be form the core of our team for the, the Commonwealth Games in Durban. Yeah. You happy with the venues? Uh, very happy. I, I think we need to look and make sure we're leaving a legacy for the, 
the, the sporting codes uh, going forward post 2022. And I think that's some, something we'd have to, uh, to manage and, and make sure that uh, the federations uh, are utilizing those facilities to continue uh, developing those efforts. Yeah, indeed, legacy is key. Jay Snyder is the representative of SES. So thank you very much indeed for your time. We're going to get more reaction from here, George Campbell. It's just been announced. Durban, the official host of the 2022 Commonwealth Games. Stay tuned to Morning Live. We'll be back in a little while.